So I would like to just, you know, greetings with this word. How long would you power out last week? <laughs> Tell you what was? You hanging in there? Got back to no more? <gasps> yeah, so many people told me, I never have experienced like this in a storm and a power. Always here. But I didn't think so. <laughs> so we are welcome you to the worship this morning who are here in person watching online, live streaming, and Facebook. Wherever you are, we are so thankful that you are here to be with us on beautiful Sunday after Resurrection Day. Now prepare our heart and mind and to go to the invitation to worship together. You are able. Let us stand. We say it together. The Lord is a king, wrapped in the light of the morning. Your throne is established from of old. Would you join me in prayer? Lord, we praise your victory from death and seeking your face. We long to feel your presence and to know you care about us. Our hearts raise in praise to you as we remember all the way you have worked in our lives. You are creator, redeemer, savior, and our friends. We desire nothing more than to honor you in our worship this morning. Amen. Let us continue, you know, remain standing, and let us sing together our opening hymn.
Haynes. <laughs> While we're standing, will you please join with me our affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed. This is what we believe. I believe in God the Father. Please be seated. Our uh, New Testament reading this morning is from the book of Colossians, the first chapter, verses 21 through 25. Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior. But now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you hold in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. If you continue in your faith, established and firm, and do not move from the hope held out in the gospel, this is the gospel that you have heard and that has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven of which I, Paul, have become a servant. Now I rejoice in what I am suffering for you, and I fill up in my flesh what is still lacking in regard to Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, which is the church. I have become its servant by the commission God gave me to present to you the word of God in its fullness. Our gospel reading is from the book of Acts this morning, chapter 5 verses 27 through 32. The apostles were brought in and made to appear before the Sanhedrin to be questioned by the high priest. We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, he said, yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and are determined to make us guilty of this man's blood. Peter and the other apostles replied, we must obey God rather than human beings. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus from the dead, whom you killed by hanging him on a cross. God exalted him to his own right hand as prince and savior, that he might bring Israel to repentance and forgive their sins. We are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. Amen. Now, Eric will bring us some beautiful music, He Lives.
he lives. Amen. Well, this is the part where we come with announcements and joys, any concerns that we've had. <laughs> what a week it's been, hasn't it? <laughs> I don't know if you all lost power, but like Pastor said, we were pioneers this week. <laughs> Go ahead, Jim. I have two stories. Number one, as I was shoveling with a uh, snowblower, it got clogged up in the chute, and I laid the handles down, cleaned it all out, put it back up, and then all of a sudden I watched all the oil coming out of the whole engine onto the part, and I didn't know why the engine broke. Could not believe it. I left it there for two days with an ugly attitude. And finally, God <laughs> said to me, why don't you go out and check to see why it leaked? Oh, I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. I got out there. What happened was, when I laid it down, the oil went from the reservoir at the bottom into the valves, cleaned out the valves, and the valves have a breather, so it split, uh, spit all the oil out, out. There was nothing wrong, Jim. I can do it. It's okay. So, hallelujah. That was Amen. a blessing. <laughs> Last one. I was in Walmart, and this is code blue. Everybody leave. <laughs> <laughs> Do we know what code blue is? There was a bomb scare at um, at Walmart yesterday. Yeah. It was you're welcome. <laughs> Glad I could be here for you. <laughs> well, I've got an interesting story. Most of you know knew my parents when they were here. And uh, <laughs> dad was a little domineering kind of a person. And uh, when he retired at 60, him and Ma started playing dominoes at the kitchen table. And uh, it was pretty spirited. And my mother was a teaser kind of a person. And she'd get this horsey laugh, <laughs> like her father. <laughs> and uh, that used to aggravate Dad real bad. But um, usually Ma would beat Dad in dominoes. And uh, Dad would get real frustrated because with his high intellect, that never should happen. <laughs> so it was interesting to watch them over the years. Uh, do that, and they faithful. They had chart after chart after chart of every score of the domino game. <laughs> Ma would get out, Dad would go in the other room <laughs> and uh, show it to everybody when they came every once in a while. And uh, it was kind of a funny thing for us kids to, to view. But um, years went by, and uh, they, you know, got in their 90s, and, uh, and Dad, they'd still play, even though Ma had Alzheimer's and she couldn't follow along. And he'd get frustrated with her, Orpha, come on, you have to play a, play a domino, play, you know. And, and uh, it was just, it, it got to be even funnier watching them play. And, uh, and, of course, Ma stopped remembering to get the scores out to show us anymore, and Dad did, which was kind of interesting. And Karen and I, uh, and all of us kids in the family and their spouses, would always comment about their domino games. And... Uh, the power went out this week, and Karen and I were looking at each other <laughs> the second night. Well, what are we going to do? I mean, <laughs> this was terrible. And wouldn't you know, we were at the kitchen table playing dominoes. Domino. <laughs> and uh, we've only played two games because the first one she beat me, and I got angry. <laughs> and the second one, I won, and I quit right there. We, we wanted to play a third one, but I didn't want to go any farther. So, and also, we're looking at each other thinking, boy, this is kind of strange. <laughs> we, we've teased each other all these years about the way my parents, so we were never going to be like that in the world. Oh, my goodness. It took the lights to go out for a few hours to turn into my parents. <laughs> so it was interesting, interesting week for a lot of reasons, but that's the thing I wanted to bring up. <laughs> I feel like Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz and <laughs> clicking my heels. It's so glad to be back in my church home. <laughs> we had a wonderful time, Howard and I, in, in Florida in our home there over the winter. And it's always good to be with our family here in New York as well. But the church family is where my heart is. So thank you all for those that I came in the door and hugged me and were welcoming me home. And I want to thank the technical gurus up in the <laughs> attic up there <laughs> who keep hmm. uh, me... Uh, in touch with uh, the service, the music, the sermons, everything here through YouTube, and also uh, Zoom, being with uh, a prayer group Thursday morning, too. I feel like I haven't really lost out at all by being gone. So thank you all.
an inter fan. I had some. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if I can get through this or not, but uh, I just was reminded of a, the Bible that says, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Uh, as you know, Patsy passed away. I don't think I can get through it, but I will. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, she said, I have to go to the hospital. So I called the ambulance. I told them it wasn't an emergency, but they had to transport my wife. And I gave him instructions. Take her to UHS. That's where I want her to go. No place else. Well, I went to UHS and she wasn't there. <laughs> so I said, you better find her because that's where I sent her. Well, they were overwhelmed. So she went to General, which is UHS, which is where she was born. <laughs> she would have wanted to go to General. <clears throat> they opened up the old part of General and I almost think she was in the same room that she entered this world when she left. Okay. So you got to believe in miracles. Mm -hmm. Okay. I had a little time between going to the bank and the funeral parlor. So I went to see Bob Messersmith to tell him because we were very close. She was the treasurer of our truck club for many years. And I was president and vice president off and on with Bob. Anyway, I told him, I said, well, Bob, I said, I got to go to Union Center tomorrow and take the check down. I said, I picked out a cemetery plot in Union Center. Bob says, hmm, just a minute. He says, I think I got a couple of cemetery plots. So he called the funeral parlor in Dirt Valley, and they said, yeah, you've got two plots that, uh, that you're, you know, Bob said his mother had bought them. Of course, everybody, a lot of you know the Messersmiths were pillars of the church for, for years. But anyway, <clears throat> he called down, and they said, you've got two plots. Bob looked at me, and he said, you got a cemetery plot. Oh, my God. What's so funny about that? That's where Patsy's sister is buried. Oh. That's where my brother's wife is buried and where I will be buried. Amen. So, you know, the people that don't believe in miracles, they haven't seen them. That's right. Amen. Amen. I have three prayer requests from the Reynolds Point folks. Um, Donna Schultz asked for prayers for her niece, Helen, who has surgery coming up. She didn't give a date. Uh, another lady asked for prayer for two women who need salvation, Kathy and Joyce. And another unsigned one was for her sister who has lost her daughter. So those are from Reynolds Point. I also have two announcements. Thursday is Sassy Senior, and we're looking forward to some delicious soup from Rodney. So come and enjoy the fellowship and the soup. Bring a sandwich if you'd like. And also tomorrow night is our uh, Beat the Scam <coughs> night at 6.30 here. Uh, we didn't give people much chance to call the office because the office had no phone <laughs> for most of this week. So come anyway. We have enough materials, 6.30. It'll be in the sanctuary, it'll be up on a screen, and you can learn some tool, have some tools to deal with any scammers that try and get you. You can uh, defeat them by knowing what to do. Mm -hmm. 6.30 tomorrow night. Sharon need a prayer for this week. She has final test. Please pray for her. She done one year almost. <laughs> This week she had final exam. 
Please keep the family of the little girl that passed away in Binghamton uh, in your prayers. She uh, lived five streets away from us. Her mother served on the PTA at the same time that I did. They're a wonderful family, um, and they still don't know exactly what happened. They are not releasing information, but please just keep this family, and the school <laughs> is very affected by it. Um, she's in sixth grade at my son's school. Just keep um, that family in prayer, please. Her name was um, Eliza Spencer. I just want to remind you that today we're going over to Ideal to do our Easter pageant that we weren't able to do on Good Friday. So if anyone is here and would like to come, <coughs> you're more than welcome. We'll be meeting at Ideal Senior. Um, we're going over to the resident side, but we have to go through the um, assisted living side because we'll need to take temperatures and do paperwork. So we're meeting there at 2. So if you're interested, please join us. Just a reminder that after service this morning, um, we're having our pizza party. Uh, it'll be downstairs in the fellowship. Um, I know that there's a surprise also coming. So... Um, that's exciting, <laughs> even though I know what it is. <laughs> I'd like to um, just make an announcement. Um, first of all, I'd like to just say praise God for our beautiful uh, spirit-led pastor. Um, I really believe that he is listening to God's leaning, and he's leading this church in just wonderful ways, and I just see it every week. A few weeks ago, he asked me, have you guys ever talked about a food pantry here? And I said, well, you know, we checked a number of years ago, and there were lots of food pantries, and they really weren't interested in forming another one. And um, so, but I, I thought, well, I'm going to make some calls. So I found that Chow was willing to have us uh, with COVID. A lot of the food pantries closed, or a number of them did. Chow was interested in having us, um, and Debbie and I have been working out the details on that. And I also checked with the food bank of um, the Southern Tier out of Elmira, and they're really a great food bank because they have a wider variety of um, perishables and non-perishables that they provide. Um, no addition, no upfront signups most of the time for that, and. Um, it's just a really great food bank, but they only take applications a couple times a year. So, and this is not one of them. So I was talking to the young lady that, about it and uh, telling her about our church. And a few weeks later, she said, I'm gonna swing by and I'm gonna take pictures of your church in the parking lots. And I said, yeah, you know, we've got a really great setup. It would be really great for people to come. Um, including even maybe a mobile food bank someday. Well, she got back to me a few days later, just as, uh, about right before the outages, <laughs> and wants to start a mobile food pantry here starting May 5th. It would be once a month. They're going to try it for four to five months and see how it goes. They would bring enough food for 150 families. Uh, we do need a lot of volunteers. She started out talking about needing 10, and now it's 10 to 15. <laughs> um, but there's all kinds of things to do. We're going to need some people to help. The people will park across the street, and they'll walk across the street. We'll set up the food bank in this parking lot off to the side of the church. They bring a big truck. Um, it's got roll-up sides, and they bring enough food, and they bring tables, and we set up all the food on the tables. They already have figured out in advance how many yogurts or how many gallons of milk or whatever each person can get. Um, but then we need people at each table, either standing or sitting, 
um, just saying, oh, you can have a milk or, oh, you can have five yogurts or whatever it is. We also need people directing the traffic. Um, and we do need a few people up front that can help us uh, load, unload the truck. They'll also bring some people with them, but just a few. So it's a wonderful, absolutely wonderful opportunity. Uh, Endwell does one, Endwell Methodist Church, every month. Last month, they had 277 families that benefited from their mobile food pantry. And I'm praying that we can have an impact on this side of the, the community. But um, what an what a absolute blessing. What a miracle, Walt, um, <laughs> that, you know, the application that couldn't even go in until August we didn't need an app. Well, we do need an application now, but they, they're making everything happen. So God is leading, and again, praise God for our pastor who's leading us in these directions. Uh, speak to Debbie or I after service. We desperately need help. We need 10 to 15 people to make this happen, but what a difference we can make. I'm seeing on the Town of Maine Facebook page, you know, lots of people lost their food, they're trying to figure out how they're going to refill their refrigerators. They're tapped for money. And this is an opportunity for people to benefit. So praise God. Sheila and I made a temporary list of <clears throat> all of you <laughs> as volunteers. So um, come see us. Pardon me? That's a Thursday. It's a Thursday morning. Yes, it's Thursday morning. Darn. <laughs> so come see us after service or downstairs at the pizza party. See if your name's not on that list, if your name is on the list, and if it's not, if we can put it on there. Okay, thank you. Being a part of this church for a number of years, <clears throat> I know the volunteers are usually thin. I think I heard it was only one day for the month that we would have to sacrifice. Is that true? That's true. Wow. We should have everybody there. Amen. going to be doing this all summer too, David. <laughs> Anything else? I think we've covered everything. I think we've all Sure. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Very nice. Anything else? I think we've covered everything. Okay. <laughs> Let's bow our heads and close our eyes and come before our Lord. Good morning, Father. We're thankful again that the electric is on and the sanctuary's warm and that we can come to your house, praise your name, learn more about you so that we can store that. And when the opportunity arises, Father, that we can share. We thank you, Father, for all of the prayer requests that we've heard this morning. We've heard of surgeries and we know of people that need salvation, Father. We know that... Um, College kids are doing their final uh, testing, and it's, it's going to be that time of the year soon, Father. And we're so thankful for that. Father, we th we're thinking of the little girl that was shot this week, Father. I ask that you be with her parents, be with her relatives. Comfort them, Father. We pray for those that have had surgeries and are recovering. We pray for those, Father, that are facing surgeries in the near future. We, Father, we're praying for our senior saints that even though sometimes they can't be with us, 
We need them to know, Father, that they're still loved and still a vital part of our congregation. We pray for our snowbirds that are starting to come home, Father, and for those snowbirds that might be staying a little bit longer than, than normal. We ask that uh, you be with each and every one of them, giving them traveling mercies. We thank you, Father, that um, we can gather afterwards and, and have fellowship in your church, Father, and that we can enjoy each other's company and relax and just talk and be together. It seems like it's been a long time. So, Father, I ask that you touch each and every one of us. Be with us as we travel this week, Father. Guide us, protect us. And with that, would you please say the Lord's Prayer with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If you're able, will you please stand with me for our next hymn, Now the Green Blade Rises. Please all be seated. The scripture this morning given to us and it comes from Mark chapter 16, verse 12, 12 through 13. Afterward, Jesus appeared in a different form to two of them while they were walking in the country. These returned and referees into the rest, but they did not believe them either. Amen. Let's pray. We ask that you be with us as we reflect upon the beauty of the cross, as we hear your words. Your words become alive in our lives. May we be able to live out the resurrection and truly become a witness of your victory. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be worthy in front of you. My Lord, may you receive all glory and honor. Amen. There was a kid who looked like a four or five years old or something, who making noise a lot, screaming, very naughty in the public transportation, which made the people in the subway 
unhappy enough. But the problem was that his dad just let him go in this way. His father really didn't care about people around. Ended up a gentleman can forward him and complain like, do something with your kid, sir. Look, your kid, he's really messing up our peaceful travel. Then his father said, I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry about that. I didn't really focus on him. I'm so out of it today because we are returning home from burying my wife who died a couple of days ago by a sudden accident. But my little poor kids didn't realize what happened to his mother. And then everyone felt sorry at that moment and understood him, the behavior of the kids. My point from the story is that is we pretty often tend to judge others in a situation by being our way of thinking. And it has been actually prevailed in many ways, many ways. Look at the screen. It's showing how pervading it is our life. An event seen from one point of view gives one impression. Seen from another point of view, it gives quite a different impression. But it's only when you get the whole picture you can fully understand what's going on. Public. Advertisement around the source to get rid of prejudice and judgments so that we'll be able to see reality and truth. In other words, our own experience, thought, will can rather black such reality and truth. The Bible warns us about such a thing. To live or distinguish his life as a children of God, the Bible gives the children of God ten commands to live by. One of the most important commands to obey is the followings. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. Exodus chapter 20, verse 3 and 4. Two of ten in the commands are warning us in this way. Either a God created by none other than our imagination and judgment. The biggest obstacle in knowing and following God is nothing other than ourselves. Our thought and judgment experience are the biggest obstacles that prevent us from living with the Lord, and it's prevent us from seeing Him properly. Today's scripture shows the scene. It is where the rescued Lord appears to two of His disciples who have been who had accompanied Him for a while who was fleeing persecution in the area of Emmaus. But the problem was that they didn't recognize Jesus, even though they had eaten, drunk, and accompanied him for three whole years. Out of everyone, they didn't recognize Jesus, even though they had spent so long together. And also this is what it says. And now that the same day, two of them were going to a valley, a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. How is something like this even possible? The following verse provides an explanation. Afterward, Jesus appeared in a different form 
to two of them while they were walking in the country. But the two men were not allowed to recognize Jesus. Afterward, Jesus appeared in a different form to two of them. In today's scripture, the two disciples hadn't truly placed Jesus' words into their hearts, even though they had been and had been with Jesus up to the point of his death and resurrection. It's because it wasn't something that couldn't trans their reasoning and experiences. Furthermore, even if Jesus were to come to life again, they probably assumed that Jesus would maintain his broken and pained body. So when Jesus appeared before them in a form that hadn't imagined, they were unable to recognize him. But this makes sure it's one thing that even though you know, Jesus came in an unrecognizable form, he was definitely and absolutely suddenly the resurrected Lord. Amen? A man is went to the church after a long, long time. But the message on that day was so impressive, particularly the words. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. That he could look back himself. So, on his way home, he stopped by a florist and brought a beautiful flower. And he pulled his car in the garage. And he went to the front door and rang the bell. As his wife opened the door, he gave her the flowers with a really big smile saying, It is for you. His wife <laughs> was surprised with the flower and said, Oh no, today I had such a rough day. Jimmy got hurt from the football practice, so I had to take him to the doctor. Tommy was in a trouble in school, so I need to go to school to see the principal tomorrow. The washing machine didn't work. The internet was not connecting. And now you come home drunk. <laughs> Didn't you say go to church? <laughs> this is a foreign story. But it's just a simply not a loudy matter. Because it showed the true present situation, our hearts, and thought that singing other than situation by our own thought and judgment. So would they have really thought, unless her husband was drunk, things like this couldn't happen because the husband has not been like what she has imagined. Like this, the greatest obstacle to our faith maturity, our conviction of the gospel, and our life with Jesus is nothing else but ourselves. So it is dependent on our preconceptions and experiences. I'm curious to know how many of us would be able to recognize our love if we were to come back to this planet. There is books based on this kind of a Christ on the view. The author was contemplating on why our faith and truth in the Lord it's not growing, and why the conviction of the gospel is decreasing. The author came to the conclusion that the problem lies within our servers. The book is titled, Jesus in the Blue Jeans. And the author clearly outlined the purpose of the book in his prologue. In his prologue, he said that he had a dream a couple of years ago. That Jesus appeared before him in blue jeans. Jesus said, don't be surprised. I only appeared before people in robes in the past because everyone else was wearing robes. 
I'm here wearing blue jeans yourself now. That's why I'm wearing blue jeans too. If the Lord were to return to this world, imagine the form he would take. If you imagine him to stand before you with a long beard, white robes, and sandals, you may be unable to recognize him. Furthermore, amid the stories and events that we don't understand, we will not know the Lord is still working. It's because our own experience and judgment block such things. Even during the time of Jesus' ministry on earth, not many were able to recognize him as the true Son of God. They only watched as they associated God with the sinners, tax collectors, and prostitutes, and formed their own stereotypes into their own worldview. As they saw the humble God riding in on on a merry donkey, they were unable to see God was their imagine to be grand covered in crowns. They didn't recognize the king of peace who offered forgiveness and love, who was not the brave leader who would destroy Roman Empire, rescues Israel, they imagined to be. As they met Jesus in place and event, they never expected, they didn't recognize him as the true Savior or King. And this is because he came in a different form from what they had thought or expected. In other words, in order to see the gospel of life and the glory of resurrection, we must be able to see the resurrected Lord and not the Lord and the faith we create. However, this is not easy. And this is you know, this next verse shows how hard this is. Verse 13, these returned and reported the air to the rest, but they did not believe them either. Our Lord is truly the Lord of resurrection and glory, who has been crucified and risen from the death. He is the one that trains all our understanding and thought. This means that when he stands before the Lord of resurrection and read of our own thought and belief, we can experience the glory of being together with him. Sometimes we know, experience the Lord, but our thought and belief and our will may prevent us from truly seeing the Lord in ourselves. Let us see the resurrected and living Lord after we lay down our fear and stubbornness. And let us open our eyes to see the Lord by putting aside our will and our way. Then we will be able to see the glory of his work and resurrection, our living God. Amen. Now you are invited to stand as we sing our closing hymn together. He lives.
Let us pray. Jesus, we give you praise and worship. Thank you for loving and being with us. When we were wandering in the darkness, you shone your light that we could see the light of glory. May you stretch your hands out to us, hold our unbelieving heart, then lay down my fear, stubbornness. Now I'm looking to you alone, Lord. Open our eyes to see and hold your face to you. Bring aside our will and our way, kneeling down, I wait on you to hear your voice. And we will see you, Lord, I'm risen from death. And I will arise and walk to you in faith when you call us. God's people say, Amen. In go in peace. Amen. Thank mm-hmm. you.